Hey there, it is Friday, July 31st. We made it through the end of the month. I'm David Gordon from Theater Mania, and I'm here with the great Marin Ireland. Hey. Hi. It is nice to see you. Nice to see you. I, uh, we're so season two of the Umbrella Academy starts today. You are a prominent figure this season. I know, and I wonder how many people in this age, it's so bizarre to think that like we shoot these things for you know, five or six months, it takes forever to edit it. And then everyone can watch the entire thing in like a morning. <laughs> like that blows my mind still. Isn't it wild? I wish, I, I, there's definitely sometimes when I wish it was spaced out. Like I love it when shows are spaced out again and you do actually have to like wait a little bit, you know? Yeah. But it's it's crazy to me that by now there are probably some fans out there who have watched almost the whole thing. <laughs> and you're in, like your TV work is just like in all of these bingeable series. I've been lucky. I've been lucky. I, I've been. I've only been a regular on a few shows, but I've been in a bunch of shows that 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 have a kind of a exciting fan bases, or at least pretty passionate ones. Yeah. How did How did the Umbrella Academy come about for you? You know, it was uh, a little bit of a bolt from the blue. Um, I was supposed to start shooting this show, uh, another graphic novel show uh, called Why the Last Man for yeah. FX. Uh, last summer and there was like a last minute shake up in the whole situation and they pushed it a month before we were supposed to start shooting, yeah. which, you know, is everyone's favorite um, right. thing. That One of those things that only really happens in my experience in TV, you know, right. theater is a little more like planned down the road. TV, yeah. they can be like, oh, never mind, let's push it six months. Right. Um, so I was sort of, suddenly I had like nothing to do and I hadn't been auditioning for anything. I was supposed to have a job. And I had a, and the why was a regular job. And through the magic of my agents, this job came to me. And um, as with a lot of, uh, you know, graphic novel stuff with lots of fan base um, intensity, I could know nothing. There was no scripts I could look at. Right. I, I had to just have a conversation with the great Steve Blackman about like what could happen with my character and go from there for like a 10 episode commitment. I couldn't read anything, which for, for a theater person is like, what do you mean I can't read anything? That's all I have to go on, right? Right. No. So I ended up, because I was doing the play that Jesse Eisenberg had written called Happy Talk at the time. Yeah. And I was like, Jesse, this guy says I'd be working a lot with Ellen Page. Do you know her? Is she as cool as she seems? And he was like, let me set you up with her. So she and I had a little coffee and like fell in love. And so I was like, I guess I'm in. Like it was kind of wild. It was wild. And they, you had the meeting with the team behind the show and they were like, well, your character's name is this and that's all we can tell you. Basically, yeah. They were like, even what we tell you right now, you cannot tell anybody else. They told me it was set in the 60s in Dallas and I was going to play a housewife named Sissy. And I was like, already? I'm kind of already in. Like, this is sort of like, already sounds great. And then they were like, you'd be working with Ellen like almost exclusively. And I was like, again, couldn't like heaven. Sounds like yeah. heaven. And then when I met her, I was like, I'd be a fool not to do this job. I mean, so you got off with Ellen right away. It, yeah, a house on fire. It was beautiful. It was really cool. And we were like, well, then we've got the chemistry already. So it was just, and it was a delight. I will say the funniest thing is that inside of like this huge like action movie of a show, she and I, our storyline was so um, tight that it kind of felt like we were shooting this little like independent movie Amazing. inside of. Cause I only really worked with her almost until the very end, you know? Right. So we were just in our little independent movie. We were like sitting on the couch, you know, yeah. driving in a car. And then, then they, like the director would come from another set and it'd be like a green screen of like people exploding, whatever. I'd just be like, oh, great. Let's just sit by the fire and have a like chat about feelings. You know? <laughs> How many episodes do you do? You How many? In? I'm in 10. I'm in oh, all 10. Cool. Yeah. I was a full on like member of the old team for, you know, for the season, which was, it was, it was wild. I've also never done that. I've never stepped in as a regular um, when the show was already established. And yeah. that was really cool to feel like, oh, welcome, welcome to this house. It's already been built. Was that a little, and I'm trying to remember all of your theater stuff and I can never remember all of it just because <laughs> you're like, Neither can I. <laughs> you're like my theatrical hero. Uh -huh. uh, you really are. Oh, that's so uh, have, great. You, have you ever stepped into like a, a running show in the middle of the run? I feel like reasons to be pretty maybe because you came into it for the Broadway 
Yeah, Reasons is probably, that's a good, that's a good memory. Um, Reasons is probably the closest in that regard that, yeah. you know, somebody else played the part and then here I was, but I also wasn't alone in that. I was definitely stressed by it, uh -huh. but Steve Pasquale and I both stepped in. So it right. felt like it was sort of a new version of it in so many ways. Um, but yeah, that was the closest I've come to like stepping in for something. I've had a couple of hilarious, like in over the course of my life, like one offs where like I stepped in, in like things way out of town or like um, yeah. there was this like Chekhov project uh, upstate for a long time that the Skip Brian Murtis and Melissa Kiedman were running. And I stepped in the last minute to play um, a role in a Chekhov play like the day of basically. But we were, everyone was like sort of reading it. It was a, yeah. so things like that where I'm, I'm, I love, I love like jumping in. <laughs> you know, yeah. The car is already running and I'm like jumping into it as it goes. I, yeah. I enjoy I was that. Can I ask how the, the, how the TV, the experience of doing that with Umbrella Academy compared? Yeah. Oh, to well, you know, the other thing I did, sorry, famously, yeah. I guess is um, Ironbound, you know, I had oh, nine right, days right, of rehearsal. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ironbound was probably the closest to that where they'd all been rehearsing the show for two weeks and then I jumped in with nine days, um, which I also did with um, Marie Antoinette. We, they yeah. rehearsed it, they did it uh, at ART and then I jumped in with nine days before Yale. But yeah. that, that I had seven years of experience developing it, so that yeah. helped. But, uh, <laughs> I feel like Ironbound is one of those plays, I feel like for a long time you were known to like blast it. Yeah. And all of a sudden you've become synonymous with like iron down. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. You yeah. gotta have something new. I have told Martina uh my oak that if Ironbound becomes my Count of Monte Cristo, I'll be happy. Like yeah. that's fine by me. <laughs> like <laughs> terrific play. Yeah. yeah. No, I love it so much. I would do it every 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 I would do it once a year if they let me. Yeah. Because you've done it, you did it here in New York at Rattlestick, you did it at the Geffen, right? Yeah. Yeah. Elsewhere or is that just No, I did it we tried to get I tried to do it in London, but there was it was a small enough theater that, you know, there were there were some issues there, but um right. they had to have a local. I yeah. should have just lied and said I lived there. Yeah, you um, do it. Yeah, I'd be like, No, I live there, it's all right and then be like, haha, magic. <laughs> um uh but then uh I'm still hoping that there'll be some other way to, to bring it to life somehow. We have some we we still have ideas about it. Um, cause the, yeah. we did the reading of it for play per view yeah. early in the pandemic and it was so fun that then we just started me and Tyne and Martina started trying to figure out like, we got to do it again. We got to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you could figure out how to actually like film it. I, mean, I feel like like stream theater has gotten so uh, advanced at this point that you could figure out how to do it with a green screen. Mm -hmm. Well, and or like, let's go to a bus stop, man. Right. Let's, go to, let's go to a bus stop in Newark. Why you, not? you can, you can six feet apart at a bus stop in Newark these days. That's what I'm saying, that's yeah. what I'm saying. They've opened up filming in, in, uh, in New York City at this point, theoretically. So as long as we're all, we can do with our face shields on and everything, it's right. fine. You won't know, like the play will be fine. Yeah, the play will be great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So everybody will just think it's set during the pandemic. That's all. Exactly. We'll yeah. credit you as one of the producers since sure, you helped okay. come up with the idea. If I could be involved with that play, I would be. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, what are you working on? Are you working on stuff these days? You know, it's an interesting question. I, um, besides uh, setting up a home audiobook recording studio inside of my closet so I could keep doing audiobooks, yes. which I do love and is truly hilarious. Um, that's great for me. I love doing those things, but I also sort of loosely organized early on in the pandemic, like a, a weekly, like what a writer's group is, I imagine, but for some actors plus a few writers and directors. So like a little, a little artist group once a week oh, cool. and we, we meet and we read stuff. And cause a lot of the zoom stuff that you see is obviously um, to raise funds or for an audience or whatever. And, we just, we just tried to make something that was um, filling the need we all have of that feeling of actual genuine collaboration and not just sort of performance, you know? So a little a little group and um, we've been developing this, this project um, lately in that group that we realized really needed to be seen by a wider audience. It was, we've been dealing with the writings um, and, the, and the interviews of um, James Baldwin and Nikki Giovanni and Toni Morrison and Audre Lorde. And we're actually working with, um, the vineyard now to sort of uh, find a way to bring it to a larger crowd. So this weird thing that was just for us is now, so yeah. stay tuned.
stay tuned, everybody. I think I'm allowed to say something will be coming in the fall that is really, really exciting for this little weird group that we made. So. Oh, that's who's in the group. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's cool. It's like a little bit of a, there's a big email list. And it's a little bit of like drop in when you can. So, right. you know, some regulars are like Dee Dee O'Connell and Kyle Beltran and Adam Chandler Barad and Reggie White and Crystal Dickinson. I mean, it's like, there's some just beautiful, Dan Butler, Chris Stack. Like, it's a really beautiful um, uh, mix of a lot of people I didn't know. It's been growing very organically in this yeah. way. It started very small. Um, and Tyler Thomas, who was the assistant director on Blue Ridge, uh -huh. we sort of brought in as our like resident director to help us like organize stuff. Cause me and Peter Kendall were sort of trying to do it ourselves and we are not good at leading a, a, a group of anybody. So. <laughs> Um, so we have, so Tyler Thomas has is, is been incredible and yeah, Ashley Atkinson. It's just like cool. It's a cool little gang of, of artists. It feels really friendly and beautiful. Talking about James Baldwin. At talk, dealing with his work and his voice and his words and, and, a, and a lot of other, especially prominent black activists and thinkers of a particular era that speaks so directly to where we are now, obviously. That's so yeah. cool. That really, that sounds yeah. really awesome. Yeah, so that's actually been kind of an amazing surprise. It's been a real um, nourishing thing for all of us artistically, and then hopefully other people will kind of experience some stuff um, that we've learned along the way, uh, revisiting some of this stuff. You know, these things are available on YouTube, but part yeah. of the only thing that I feel like, I think you you probably can imagine in this moment, a lot of actors that I know at least were sort of like, oh, <laughs> it's really easy to just shut down everything that we do. Like, we're not exactly essential workers in the capital E essential sense, although the arts are obviously essential. So there has been a lot of times where I felt like what I have to offer specifically isn't the most urgently needed. Um, yeah. But- someone like me, it absolutely is. <laughs> right, exactly. And so what we've been able to feel like is, oh, well maybe actually in being able to sort of deliver these words because I'm not going to necessarily, if I'm, uh, you know, a busy person in the world, actually doing some of these essential services, I might not be able to sit down and watch a two-hour-long James Baldwin, Nikki Giovanni video on YouTube. But yeah. I might be able to, I might actually be inclined to watch some actors sort of interpret this and deliver this to me in a way that brings it very immediately right. to me now through the voices of, of actors working today. So that made me feel like, oh, we are useful. We can actually provide a, a specific service that might serve to inspire and galvanize people right now today. So anyway, we, we are excited about that. It feels a little bit like there is a place for us today. Yeah. <laughs> there can be a purpose. Because I was going to say, my this, this whole thing has made my my attention span is just like shot these. Days. Oh I no, absolutely, absolutely. So we're looking for ways, obviously, to to work with that too. Like we can do yeah. things for fifteen minutes at a time. Like trying to figure that out with a place like the Vineyard is fascinating. To be like, okay, well, it's not really like let's not just be like this is a two hour thing. That's right. not really what we what's really works anymore. Like yeah. can, can we? How else can we structure these things? You know, I, all, say, I know one day I'm going to have to see like a Tom Stoppard play live again. <laughs> like petrified that bad getting through all 12 hours you know what i mean i know i know how are we going to do without getting to just like you know text somebody or look at our phone or chat right. or whatever i know i know we're gonna but, have to we're gonna have to ease into it but that also sort of goes back to like the fact that people are probably binge watching umbrella academy right now <laughs> i know i know i know but you can do that while you're eating snacks right you know, pause it you know yeah yeah it's it's funny, you mentioned Didi O'Connell. One of the last things I saw was Dana H. at the Vineyard. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Brutal. Truly. So brutal, but she brutal. was so good. Virtuosic. And, yeah. you know, speaking of, though, that's such an exciting way to, like, actually think of the changing role of tech yeah. and technology in theater. And it's part of what we're thinking about now is actually, like, talking with her a lot about those ideas is it's like, right, like, theater can look like a lot of different things. And actually the way that Dana H works is sort of fascinating to imagine in this kind of a context, you know, yeah. like using yeah. some other outside source. That play would do really well in a medium like this. You yeah. could make that play out good. Right, I know, I know. Was, uh, I want to talk about Sneaky Pete. I right. really, really like that show. Like you I, do? I love that show. Oh, good, good. And Margot Martindale just got like her 1000th Emmy nomination. Only Margo, I mean, like an, an Emmy nom, like in a pandemic, I'm blown away. I forgot yeah. that things like the Emmys even really happened anymore at this moment. I'm like, what, what, what is, what is the world? 
but I'm so proud of her. And of course she did. She's a beloved genius. character actress, Margot. Martin. Beloved hashtag. Yes. Beloved character actress, uh, esteemed character actress, all of that. Yes. That show ended last year, right? Yes. What, uh, was that your first like regular, like series regular full kind of capacity role? You know, my very first one was a short-lived show called The Divide that was much loved and short-lived that right. Tony Goldwyn and Richard Legravenes yeah. created. Yes, with Ann Dowd and Jan Maxwell. All right. Oh my God, and John Bedford Lloyd and Clark Peters and Chris Bauer. And it was sensational. I was so proud of it, it about The Innocence Project. We loved it so much. It was sort of mishandled. Um, we made the pilot for AMC and they decided at the last minute to uh, use it to rebrand the Wii channel. Right. Um, and then mishandled in TV these days. Uh -huh. And then they decided not to do that after right. it came out. You know, the, the thing is, is sometimes you have a person at some of these networks where somebody is super excited and then that person um, quits their job or leaves or is fired or whatever. And then you're stuck with somebody else who is like, um, I don't know if I really want to rebrand anything. And then you're like, but wait, what do we help? Yeah. You know, so, you yeah. And, 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 you know, to their credit, um, actually like the president of AMC, I saw him in an event once and a couple of years ago and he was like, I need, I owe you an apology. You guys created a perfect show and we fumbled it and it deserved better. And we, I was like, actually, that makes me feel better. Thank you. Yeah. So the first season is available to watch, but we were so confident in it. It ends on this cliffhanger. So I wish we could go back and do like a two hour, like wrap up movie of it. Yeah. Cause like when you watch it, it's fantastic. It's like one of the best reviewed things I've ever been in. I believed in it with all of my heart. I loved it so much. I had it like, it spoiled me for television forever because Tony and Richie were such the nicest uh, perfect, people. the nicest people, the most generous collaborators. They're theater people through and through, as you know. And a lot of every, us involved were theater people. Damon Gupton, Clark Peters, we all we all worked on it as a theater company. And it was like, it spoiled me after that. I was like, now I know what TV can be and right. why people like being a part of a company on television. It was special. Do you, are you the kind of actor that does TV so you can like be able to do like an off-Broadway show? I mean, in some ways, you know, I do really, I do really enjoy it. To me, they feel working on TV. It feels so different, but I find them both. They both, they each medium sort of teaches me about the other and how to engage with the other almost better in a way. Like TV teaches me so much more about like being in the moment. You literally don't know what's going to be in the next episode. You right. can only play the scene in front of you, and you have to make. It's like it's like you're in tech and previews every day. It's like, well, this is it. And like somebody goes, can you try that again, but drop that first line? And you're like, okay, you know, like, but they might use that. So like that to me is just to like learn to let go and um, play the play exactly what's in front of you and take big risks and then move on. Yeah. It's a huge lesson. And I love sort of the freedom of being like, oh, here's what you get to do next week. Oh, okay, wow, that's fun. And then, in, and then of course I start craving theater as soon as I'm doing TV. And once I've done six months of TV, I'm like, God, I wanna do a play and just like get to play the whole thing out, yeah. you know, eight times a week. So they, I, they, I, I really, for me, my dream is to continue to, to, continue to balance both. Um, I, I haven't really taken, I've been so lucky that I don't know if I've taken any jobs just for the money or anything, yeah. any TV jobs. I've, there's always been something that I've really been into doing, either somebody I got to work with or a weird part I got to play or I got to fake hijack a plane or, you know, something yeah. bananas that's like, ooh, that sounds fun. You don't get to do that on stage, you know? Right. So uh, there's always some reason for me, but I, I, I love doing all that. And it doesn't feel like it's the same at acting at all. It's yeah, completely it different. And it doesn't have to be either or. Exactly. Yeah. For me, for me, I really just like, I love doing both things. Yeah. yeah. But you were actually asking about coming, stuff coming up. I, we're still crossing our fingers and knocking on wood that why we were supposed to start shooting Why the Last Man right. um, in March. So the sets were all built. We were ready to go. We were a few days from flying up to Toronto and it's all waiting for us. So as soon as they will allow us like disgusting Americans up there. <laughs> Um, and as soon as the protocols for safety are all ironed out and all of that, hopefully we'll be able to start shooting ASAP because it's ready and waiting for us. So that, that, that I'm crossing my fingers because I do, I do love to work so much. Yeah. I miss it. But yeah, anyway, just to like, hopefully that works. No, out. it's good. I was going to ask you if you had any theater projects canceled by 
Oh God. Um, you know, I was lucky. I've had a couple of things. I have a couple of things that were, I have no idea the, the status of them at this moment because I, because I was supposed to start shooting Y in March for about six months, but there was something I maybe was going to be able to do in September. Uh, and then there was something I was hoping to do in the spring. Uh, and so who knows? Right. <laughs> So I don't know where those are even, they're not necessarily, I may get to do them. I hope I get to do them. They're definitely not gonna happen when they were gonna happen. So yes. those two things are getting kicked down the road, hopefully, and I'm just crossing my fingers that I get to do them when they can happen, so. Yeah. I was talking to David Adjami the other day <laughs> about his book. You were, yes! Yeah. Oh my God. And he was talking about like, and we were talking about like theater and like what's going on. And he was like, yeah, I had a project in next spring that is already moving. I'm like, oh, we're moving projects next spring already. That's yeah. not good. Yeah, well, because the things that were supposed to be in the fall have to right. get shot. You know, it's just yeah. like the way, again, like like TV strangely can happen sort of last second. Yeah. But theater as like the major difference is how far in advance things get planned. Did you read his book, Lot right. Six? The, the book is great. It's sensational. It's and he uses those kinds of words in his everyday conversation. Too. I know. Like he has that vocabulary at his fingertips. Yeah. It's really dazzling. But no, I'm so proud of him. It was so amazing. I was like an early reader and um my only question is why aren't I in it more? But <laughs> I guess we had we had sort of just met when the when the book ends. That's yeah. fine. For his yeah. next memoir, it can be all right. about, Talk about <laughs> Yeah. But we're hoping to schedule some kind of event where I can I can read some of his book. Oh, that'd um, be for him. Yeah, that would be really fun. Marin, thank you for your time. Oh my goodness, it was a blast. I could talk yeah. to you all day. Yeah, same. Uh, a, you too. And Umbrella Academy is on Netflix right now, starting ooh, today. Ooh, you can maybe. turn right from this to be watching that. <laughs> yeah, or maybe you're watching both at once. You know, picture in picture is still a thing. So. Exactly, exactly, side by side. Exactly. Have a good weekend. Thanks for Thank chatting. Thank you. You too. Stay safe. Right. You too. Take care. Bye.